Hello everybody, nice to see you again. And today um, I'd like to talk to you about this. This is the Olympus STF-8 flash gun for macro and close-up work. Okay, let's get rid of that. Inside the box you will find this semi-rigid case, which is quite nice. And in it, you get two mounting rings to attach the unit to the camera lens. The first one is designed for the um, Olympus 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro lens, which is, has a 62 millimeter lens. So it will attach to any lens that's got a 62 millimeter thread, or you can use um, step up rings to achieve that. And the other ring, I've already attached the little mounting brackets on um, because it's a bit of a fiddle, um, getting them on and off, is a 46 millimeter thread ring, which means that it is mounts directly to the Olympus 60 and 30 millimeter macro lenses. Okay. What else is there? Well, we have uh, the controller and power pack. The power pack runs off uh, four AA batteries. On the front here, um, there is a um, semi-opaque panel, which allows the camera, uh, the uh, flash unit to communicate um, with other cameras in the Olympus RC control mode for a form of wireless flash control. On the reverse side of the unit, there's an on or off button with two lights, one to show you're on or off, and the other one that shows that you're charged. You've got two dials, one controls the lighting ratio of the two lighting units. And uh, both units, they're labeled. You have unit A, unit B, and you can select what lighting ratio you want to use using this. At the moment, I've got it set to one to one, but it goes all the way down to one to eight on each side. Then the other dial is uh, for setting the flash unit to either um, TTL with remote control function or setting it in manual. And it goes from full power to one one hundredth of a twenty eighth power. So that's what uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stops. That's pretty good send stop range. On the bottom you've got a standard hot shoe with the configuration for um, the micro four thirds protocol which means this unit will work on both uh, Olympus and uh, Panasonic cameras but you may have to find um, updated firmware for your camera to get the full use out of this. There's a locking switch to hold it in place on the um, camera hot shoe. You've got two wires leading to two flash heads. The flash heads have these diffusers that can clip into place. And they also have a nice feature of being able to tilt them because as you get closer and closer to your subject, you may find that you have to angle in the lights so that the light will fall on the subject. Okay. So let's attach all that. There's a little locking mechanism in there that 
holds these heads in place, which is a nice little touch, so you can't lose anything. And I don't know if you can hear that, but these diffusers clip into place so they won't flap around. And if you don't want to use the diffusers, then you can pull them back and there's a little notch here on the back edge of it, which clips onto the cable there. Again, so they don't flap around and become annoying. Let's get rid of that. Okay. These little holders can be rotated around on this ring. If you press the release buttons either side, you can position the flash heads to wherever you want to. Like all Olympus equipment, weather resistant. And I've used this out in a couple of downpours already with no problems. Um, just works like all Olympus equipment does in poor weather. It's brilliant. It's one of the reasons why I use the system. A nice little feature is that it's fully compatible with the Olympus radio triggers. And um, I'll be doing a video about using them in conjunction with other lighting sources um, in the next week or so. So look out for that one if that's something that floats your boat. And yeah, let's see how it works in the field. It appears fiddly to set up, but once you've done it a couple of times, it really is straightforward. I leave the adapter ring with the cold shoes on my 60mm lens, which speeds up the whole process. The STF-8 is well made and appears quite sturdy. I've been using it for five months and I often walk through the bush with my camera on a strap over my shoulder and the flash on the camera and I've had no problems. It is simple to use and it gives very good results. Back at home, and I'm now trying out the STF-8 on a Panasonic G85, again using the Olympus 60mm macro, and it works flawlessly with the camera, as it should because it adheres to the Micro Four Thirds protocols. So this would be a good accessory to have if you were into doing macro photography with the Panasonic cameras. So what can I say in summing up? Well, I like the unit. I've been using it a lot this uh, winter and uh, spring, photographing wildflowers, and it has been absolutely brilliant for that. Um, I've, had, I've got no complaints with it. I've been using it mainly in uh, TTL mode, and whether it's been singularly or in conjunction with uh, the other flash units and uh, I'll put a, a video up, as I said, about that in the next week or so. Um, yeah, it, it, it's easy to control. Um, it's fairly intuitive. And, um, you know, I've been very, very happy. The only um, con I found with using it is that it does not enable high-speed sync. And... Um, 
I like using that because I like to um, sometimes throw my backgrounds out um, as close to black as possible when photographing flowers. And um, high speed sync is one of those things that enables me to do that. Um, so not having it, I thought was a bit of a bummer. But then I had a bit of a think and found a workaround in the form of a neutral density filter. Now one of the handy things about this unit is this mounting ring also has a filter thread on it. So that means I can quickly attach a neutral density filter without having to take all this off, screw the filter on, then screw all the flash units back on and all that malarkey. So that's quite quick swapping over. And I found basically having a two-stop neutral density filter allows me to darken the background by at least two stops um, and uh, then I can uh, illuminate uh, the uh, flowers with the uh, flash unit. So that's a little workaround. Um, it's not ideal, but as I said, it is a workaround and I'm happy to use it at the moment. I don't know if high-speed flash sync could be built into one of these type of units because they're just not powerful enough. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. Please do look out for the next video on using it with flash triggers and I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you very much. Goodbye.